G'day folks, it's 10 minute Tuesday time. Hey look, thanks for those that have emailed, messaged, sent in those questions about insecurity, that's super useful. Uh, you know, they're all great questions and great questions lead to great answers. So stay tuned for my response for the, the top most frequently asked questions about insecurity. Um, Cause it's, it's useful to keep the conversation and give people hope that you can actually solve this problem rather than just manage it. So I'll do a podcast about that. I'll do a video and I'll do, I'll do a blog just to make that thorough. So thank you again for, if you've taken the time to send in a question. Uh, also uh, the book, I, th I think I'll have that back by next Friday, which is super exciting. And look, I, I am, I may be biased, but it is a good book. I have put a lot of love into that and it is a very thorough take on how you solve the insecurity problem. So I reckon you'll love it. There's some great stories in there, great case studies, uh, lots of examples, a little bit of humor. I'm trying to be funny. Someone told me I was funny the other day. It just made my day. It's great. Uh, I have as my hardest, like I, in my 101 goals list, the hardest goal is five minutes of stand up comedy. So at some point in my life, I'm going to get up and try and make people laugh. Terrifying. Uh, anyway, Today I'm talking about self-judgment and the fact that you can't do self-judgment and self-awareness at the same time, which I reckon you've probably heard me say before, but that's okay because people get stuck here all the time, even though they've heard it. So it's worth another conversation. Um, you know, so it, it is uh, the adult responsibility to know yourself, to, to fully understand who you are, what's inside you, what you're capable of, what you want. So that knowing requires you got to have some visuals on that. You got to be some some optics. You need to see that. So that's that's self awareness. Uh, very hard to understand or know something if you can't see it. But you can't see it in the presence of judgment. And the reason that is true is because it's not safe to see it in the presence of judgment. Judgment means there is a right and a wrong, a good and a bad, an in and an out. I'm sure you know this feeling when you're talking to someone and they ask you a question and you can tell there's an agenda and that means they're looking for a certain response from you. So there would be a, a right response and a wrong response. Now, you're no idiot, right? So you're not going to give the honest answer if the honest answer is going to get you hurt. You'll give the, you'll give the, the right answer. And the, that's exactly the same way that self-judgment prevents us from giving the honest answer. In the presence of self-judgment, um, we can't afford to give the the honest answer because it might implicate us. If we turn all the lights on, what we might find might be bad. It might be something no good. It, it might embarrass us. It might cause shame. It might highlight an inadequacy. Um, it might prove that an opinion is true. There's a bunch of danger with turning the lights on if there is judgment around. So we just shut it down. Like we're not silly. We're not stupid. We're not going to hurt ourselves deliberately. So the only chance you've got at seeing what is really true for you is to do it in a clean environment. So um, I find people get stuck here all the time. They get stuck uh, either on the what do you want question. Lots of people get stuck there. I don't know what I want. I'm not sure what I want. Yeah, I think I want this. I'm not, how do you know what you want? Um, or they get stuck on the you know, going into their, their story. I don't know where this started. I don't know what I believe about myself. I don't know when I formed this opinion. I don't know what my agreements are. It's hard. I, I, don't, I don't know how to know that. So you get, people get stuck in one or two places. And it's the same problem every time. Without a doubt, the, the biggest inhibitor of personal growth is self-judgment because it shuts down the self-awareness process. You literally cannot do both at the same time, no matter how hard you try. And there are lots of subtle forms of self-judgment. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just annoyed. I'm disappointed. I'm frustrated. All judgment. All judgment. Because you're, you, you, you're saying there's something wrong with your experience. So uh, in order to do awareness, you're going to need a judgment-free space, a clean space. So there's a few ideas about how to do that well for yourself. Um, the first, which I no doubt you've heard me say again, is to explore the intention of self-judgment. It is not to better yourself. It is to protect yourself. So judgment, self-judgment is a preemptive strike from the judgment of others. We are very acutely aware of the opportunity others have to judge us and we don't want that. So if we can't do anything to protect it, we'll get in first to soften the blow. So um, there's, there's two distinctions around this because someone asked me about this the other day and I've been giving it some thought. Um, I would say if you judge yourself out loud, 
you don't believe that's true. And if you judge yourself internally, you do believe it's true. So for example, um, you know, if you're in a meeting and you're late and you might say, ah, oh, look, yeah, I'm just, I'm a really unorganized person that, you know, um, you don't believe that not for a minute, you know, that's not right, but that's what you fear. Everyone else is thinking about you. So if you say it, then they don't have to, or you, or you say, oh, you know, I just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be seen as selfish or, you know, I'm, um, I'm a lazy person. I'm a difficult person. I'm not good socially. You don't really believe that. That's horrible. You just think that's what others think about you. So you get in first. Um, the stuff you say internally, the harsh things you, you say to yourself, they're probably more likely to be beliefs you've got about yourself. Um, but in the end, I wouldn't get too caught up on either, right? on either one because that probably doesn't matter that much anyway because all beliefs are a work of fiction. All beliefs are made up. So... And the more you examine them, the more you find holes in them anyway. So fear unexamined grows, fear examined diminishes. Same as limiting beliefs. You start looking at them, you realize that there's holes all through them. They don't stack up. They don't even make sense. And so they're not true. Um, even great beliefs aren't true either, by the way. They're all works of fiction. You know, this is why it's, it is so important to know what you want. Um, which you do know, by the way, but you can't do awareness and judgment at the same time. So this comes comes back on itself. But you get clear about what you want and this becomes very pragmatic. It becomes, well, what would I need to believe to get more of what I want? This belief, whether it's true or not, doesn't really matter. It's in the way of getting me what I want. So it's time to go, time to update that belief. So self-judgment, understand the intention. It is not to better yourself, it's to protect yourself. And look, we only protect that which we love. Like, for instance, if my kids, one of my kids, or my dog, whoever, my wife, yep, if someone came into my office and stole this blue pen from me and snapped it and threw it out the window, I wouldn't cry. Um, it says business for life. It's some pen I got from a business networking meeting. But guess what? I got three more of them in my bag as well. I probably didn't need to take all three, but I am partial to a nice pen um, but the point is i don't don't really care about it and i've got plenty more where they came from i've always got lots of pens so but if someone came and took my phone and snapped it and chucked it out the window i would cry because i love my phone and i'm not afraid to say that some people are but i, I genuinely love my phone the amount of things you can do is just wonderful uh, so the point is the same for ourselves. People think, oh, I don't like myself. I don't care about self. No, no, if that's true, why are you investing so much in self-protection? We only protect that which we love. And the more we value something, the more we protect it. So self-judgment is self-protection. Self-protection is self-love. So that's good to know. So here's, here's how you let go of self-judgment. Not by judging yourself or judging yourself. That's a slippery slope. You get stuck in that cycle. You swap it. You don't stop it. So you realize the intention is love. You go, hmm, could there be a better way of loving myself than being so unkind and so critical? I, I reckon there could be. I reckon you could find a better way of loving yourself than doing that. So um, the thing about upgrading strategies is that they have to feel like a less to more transaction. You can go back through past catalogs. I'll, I'll let you know in the show notes which one it is. But I did a whole episode on the less to more transaction. But, you know, basically this is how it works. Um, we're trying to do the best we can and we're motivated to get the best deal we can for ourselves, but it has to be believable. We only go for what's believable. So if someone came to you and they had a hundred dollar note in one hand and a $10 note in the other hand, and they said, honestly, you can have whichever note suits you, whichever one you want. Um, most people will take the $10 because they don't actually believe they could have the hundred. They think the hundred, there's a trap, there's a trick. No one's giving me a hundred dollars. It's more likely this $10 is actually free, so I'll take that. Um, however, if you spent some time with that person and they did whatever they needed to do to convince you that you could genuinely have the 100 without any strings attached, like, and you believed them, then of course you take the 100. Every day of the week, every single person takes the 100. Like this, of course. You don't have to discipline yourself to take the 100. You don't have to force yourself. You don't have to trick yourself. You don't have to motivate yourself. You just take the hundred and you go and spend it at the shops. The same is true when you upgrade strategies. If you genuinely believe it's a better strategy, you don't have to trick yourself, force yourself, motivate yourself, make deals with yourself, create habits for yourself. You just take the better deal and be done with it. <laughs> so, 
if you just take a bit of time just to realize that kindness and curiosity is a better deal than judgment and criticism, A, because it feels better, but B, because it makes self-awareness possible and you need self-awareness to do the adult work, to stop pretending not to know things that you do actually know. So the moment you get that, I think the self-judgment problem solves itself, really. Um, I, I, this is definitely something I've solved for me. I, I noticed probably five or six years ago that my self-talk is predominantly positive. Um, and that was five or six years ago. Now it's like, it's entirely positive. I'm just, it doesn't make sense to be cruel to myself. I don't need to be. <laughs> I can love myself better than that. Like I genuinely can. I don't, it's not some trick that I've developed. I'm not disciplined about not judging myself. I just don't do it because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't get me anything of value. So there's that. Can't do self-judgment and self-awareness at the same time. Uh, yeah, look, I think that's all for today's show. Stay tuned for the book. Jump on the short course if you're ready for that. Just help you change the conversation you're having with insecurity. There's so much lightweight stuff, as you know, in the personal development space. This is not. These are eight counterintuitive but high quality ideas that will just shift the whole focus of the conversation you're having with insecurity. Then there's exercises for you to do to reflect yourself and just check in and apply those ideas for yourself. Um, and then you get a call at the end, a short call with me to check in and reflect on that. And I'll give you some feedback, um, help you on your way. So look, it's a, it's a no brainer. I think if, if you're ready to solve insecurity, um, it's cheap, won't always be at that price. I will change it after the book comes out. So it's, it is 99 for a limited time. Um, yep. Yeah, so there's that. Great. I'll leave it there. Talk to you later.